Number one, finger tricks. Finger tricks is a very important aspect for OH solving because your TPS or turns per second is largely dependent on your finger tricks. And if you just do an H prim like this, it's very difficult to get really fast with that finger trick. But if you're doing H prim like this, then improving is a lot easier for you. First, let's go through the basic finger tricks. Now, I'm assuming that you're using your left hand to do OH solving, but if you use your right hand, just mirror everything I do. So, U prime, or if you're using your right hand, is U. It's done with your index finger, pushing from the back, just like two-handed. A U move, or a clockwise U move, is done like this, with your index finger dragging from the front to the back. An R move is done like this, with your pinky from the back of the of this piece, and then drag it all the way to the front. An R prime is done like this, with your pinky nail dragging this part of this piece, and then drag it back. For M prime, which is uh, the M slice going up, you hold the cube like this. Your middle finger holds the gap between the this piece and this piece, and your thumb holds the same place but on the front. And then you press this side against the table, and you use your ring finger to push the back of this piece, which goes like this. The M move is a lot harder to do than the M prime, but after you get used to it, it's very easy. So, still the same grip, still pressing the DR on the table. You use your pinky to drag the FD sticker down, like this. Again, this is very hard to do at the beginning, but after you get used to it, it's gonna be very easy. And your pinky is gonna hurt a little bit at the beginning, because this part of your skin is not used to that type of turning. For our wide moves, you want to use your ring finger to push the same place as the M prime move, but you're not pressing the cube against the table. So it just goes like this. Or alternatively, you can just use your pinky to drag it up. For our wide prime, you can use your pinky to drag it down, or use your ring finger to push it back. For the L moves, there is a easy way and a very hard way to do it. They're about the same speed, so I don't think it's really worth it to learn the hard way. So the easy way is just to do a Z rotation, or a Z rotation if you're not weird, and then do a U move, or U prime. The harder way is pretty hard. So you have to do this specific grip, where you grip this part with your middle finger and your ring finger, and thumb on the front right here, and pinky right here, so, so that nothing is in the left layer. And then you use your index finger to drag it down. This finger trick is like being color neutral. You don't have to use this finger trick to get really good. For D move, you use your ring finger to push it to the front. D prime is just to push it to the back, like this. This is also a basic finger trick, but I forgot to mention it. For F moves, use your uh, finger to drag here. Sometimes your cube's magnet is too strong, so, so you might wanna like press your cube against the table and then do F move. This can prevent two layers from moving at once like this. For F, use your thumb to drag, to either drag the front face up or use your thumb to drag from the bottom up. 
for B moves, you just do a F wide and then rotate. F wide, rotate, F wide, rotate, F wide, rotate. And the other way works the same. Now let's move on to some more advanced finger tricks. For R2s, you use your pinky to drag from here all the way back to here. Which goes like this. That's a bad one. Let's do it again. Or alternatively, you can do this. They're about the same speed, but there's another way to do it, which is a double flick using your pinky followed by your ring finger. Those R2 moves are normally used during second block where you insert the DR edge, and then uh, basically during the second block you should be having your ring finger and pinky down the bottom, and then your index finger on the top which means this is sometimes worth it, but not always. Depends on what the situation is. For D2, you can just do uh, two D primes, I mean two Ds, or you could do a double flick, like the R2 move I told you about. For U2s, there's a lot of ways to do it, but for second block and for LSE, the optimal ways are different. So for second block, you should just do two U primes, because U twos are not really worth it if you have to regrip to this grip. The other way to do it is to drag your index finger all the way from the back to the front, like this. This finger trick is way more useful than the double flick, because during LSE you're going to be using your pinky and ring finger to do M2 flicks, and then your index finger is free to do this move. Another way to do it is to drag it from the front to the back. You don't have to stick to one of them in your entire selves. So for a case like this, you can use your finger to drag it to the front first, M, drag it to the back, M prime. For our wide twos, uh, they're not very useful because for second block, you're gonna use it a maximum times of twice. And then for R2 moves, you either just do R wide, R wide, or R, R2, a flick with your pinky and your ring finger. The most important thing trick is the M2 flick, which goes like this with your pinky and, and then your ring finger. So, you push it. Oh wait, it's very hard to find an angle. Hopefully this is a good angle, I can't see my camera right now. So, it's done like this. Pinky, ring finger. Pinky, ring finger. Pinky, ring finger. At the beginning, it's very tempting to just do M2s, like M prime, M prime, instead of M2 flicks because M2 flicks are not practically faster at the beginning because how long it takes for you to get used to it. For me, it took like two weeks to get used to this finger trick. For me, it took two weeks to get used to this finger trick. Number two, efficiency. During the first block, you should be able to plan a eight move or less first block every single time. To do that, you need to be what's called an X to Y color neutral, which means you can start on white on bottom or yellow on bottom and from any side on the front. And you need to be able to take advantage of pairs like this or this that have two white or yellows on them. I will not talk too much about this. I will make a separate video about first block efficiency, but for example like this, you have to recognize patterns like this, that you have you can do an M prime to join these two, and then a U wide to do this. You also have to remember that you have the entire cube to work around with, so uh, don't be afraid of abusing this pair and making it a block with this pair. 
like this. Number three, plan hold first block at once. A common mistake I see from beginners is that they just solve one pair and then solve the other pair. And sometimes make a mistake like me who is a noob. Instead, give yourself unlimited inspection time at the beginning so that you can slowly build up your skill to plan the entire first block. So let's just do a normal hand scramble. Okay. So I see this D, this uh, DL that can be inserted in one move. And then when I do that, this is going to be pushed here. So I can do a wide prime, B, to to make a square. And then I'm going to track where the other pair is. So uh, D is going to take this here. And then R wide prime, this doesn't move. B prime, this is going to, this is going to go here. And then I track, and I track this the same way. Number four, learn full CMLL. CMLL is step when you solve the four corners after you solve the two blocks on the sides. And if you just use beginner CMLL, you need nine algorithms and you need to use two of them every single time. But you can just learn 42 algorithms and that's going to save a lot of time. And for this case, you just do this. And a full list of algorithms is in my descriptions. Normally, what people tend to do at the beginning is to solve the EL and then solve the LR and then solve the rest. But instead, you could learn a set of ELR, which is like F2L. It's intuitive and it helps you to improve your efficiency. And what it does is it solves EL and LR at the same time as you just saw. And just in case, if you're wondering, this is oriented, because if you do M move, everything is oriented. Number six, second block efficiency. For cases like this, it's very easy for you to just get used to this way to solve it. But there is a very efficient way to solve it, which is like this. I'm just going to go through a few cases that really hurts your brain when you're first learning them, but it's really worth learning. Just uh, And I'm not going to go through every single case, because if I go through every single case, this video is going to be like two hours long. So, for example, this case, uh, where you have this sticker matching here, and if you just do an F move, this will be solved, and the corner solved, you just do this. It's basically a... I forgot whether it's at anti soon or soon, but it goes like this. And it's very efficient. Number seven, hardware matters. If you use a cube like this that hardly even turns, then it is a lot difficult and slower for you to improve than using a really good cube, like my purple worm. Okay, let's try that again. Here we go. The cubes that are good for OH solving, for real OH solving, basically very fast and very stable. I mean, that's kind of against itself, but you get what I mean, like this cube. It's pretty stable after I put like 10 drops of gone lubes in it. And I also recommend the Tornado V3. Just don't buy the Magla version because the Magla version is way too fast. And the R3M2020, I used to main that cube. I love that cube. The only th downside about that cube is that the dust builds up really quick. And you have to clean it very often. By the time of recording, my global average is 17.3 seconds, and I've only been taking OH solving seriously for three months. And this really shows how good this method really is. And if you just follow everything I just said in this video and practice a lot, it is really, really easy to get really fast at OH. And that leads us to my last tip of the video. Honestly, just practice. 
Thank you guys so much for making it all the way to the end and enjoy this background footage I recorded for some reason and see you guys next time.